Good morning. It's John Gilkison, Aero Stealth here, and it is Monday, October 23rd, I think, uh, 2022, and I just have a quick presentation for you this morning on trailer aerodynamics. Uh, be it came about because we were camping over at Bottomless Lake in uh, Roswell, New Mexico. And we went to a, a science uh, fair event at the convention center. And I went out to the parking lot and I spotted this uh, rig out here. Let's see it. And we'll, what it is is a, a motor home. Uh, towing a car hauler and uh, interestingly enough the uh, the car hauler had the logo stealth on it um, and that's not unremarkable in and of itself because I have uh, spotted these on the highway before but uh, this is the first time I'd seen one in a parking lot and the owner happened to be outside doing something and walking towards the door and so I went over and I talked to him and it turned out he was an auto dealer and uh, so I was asking him about the trailer uh, combination uh, how it affected his miles per gallon and he basically told me it didn't matter. He said it, uh, he got eight miles per gallon whether he was towing the trailer or not. And I talked to him a little bit about the aer aerodynamics of the, uh, the uh, rig. But he just kind of said, well, that's physics. So he thought that the frontal area of the, of the uh, motor home was the biggest culprit in these MPGs, and I told him blunt shapes were fine. I said all the actions behind the vehicle. And uh, so I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about this. Uh, um, Phil looked up the stealth trailer, and it essentially does have a, it's, a, it's eight feet wide, and it does have a, uh, a wake area of 64 square feet, roughly. And the wake area of the of the uh, rig itself is uh, 100 square feet. So as you can see, that's a 36% reduction in wake area. So this is this is the magic here. He's he's in the shadow of the uh, motorhome with this trailer. And the trailer itself only weighs about 2,600 pounds. And um, it's got pretty good aerodynamics for a trailer. We're not certain about how smooth the belly is, but it's probably smooth. And it's low to the ground, as you can see. Um, so I made up a little drawing to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let's see what we can do with this. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but essentially what I'm trying to show with this drawing is that the motorhome is, of course, taller than the uh, trailer. And the air comes off of it, and it, and it rolls into what's called a, a shedding vortex. And that, that vortex gets narrower as it reaches the end of the trailer. And the air above this vortex just rides over it as if that was a solid form. So by the time the air gets to the back of the trailer, because of its length, it's essentially flush with the rear end of the trailer. <coughs> so the whole wake area of the, uh, the uh, tractor-trailer combination has been reduced by essentially 36%. And uh, so if he's hauling 
this kind of extra mass and, and so forth uh, and not seeing any penalty for it. That is remarkable. And this, this bodes well for many of the projects that we've been talking about involving trailers. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put uh, my camera here on a, on a stand. See if we can't tilt it back a little bit. There we are. And sorry it's so dark in here today, but uh, it's raining out. It's really cloudy. It's early in the morning. So I've got the house to myself, so I wanted to shoot this. And I got as many lights on as I can. But uh, here we are. Um, the This general principle would work with, with any vehicle. Like, for example, if I was to put a hitch on my uh, um, EV, my Chevy Bolt, and put a trailer behind it that was no wider than the than the uh, tow vehicle, the EV, and not only that, but had smooth sides that uh, incorporate the wheels into the unit so that they're not flared out, creating drag, uh, smooth underbelly, and literally instead of allowing the air to come off the back of the EV and tumble, you could make it the same height as the EV and then taper it down. Um, or you could just make it straight and allow, allow the air to tumble over it because it does create a, a phantom shape, so to speak. Um, but at any rate, such a rig, uh, I, I could tow behind my EV with basically zero penalty. And uh, even though I've increased the rolling resistance and uh, increased the wetted area, the skin friction, but I could reduce the wake area of the vehicle and that would counterbalance all these other forces. And uh, of course the potential exists here to actually carry batteries in a trailer for more range. However, I think just having, um, being able to haul things and having extra storage could be a real boon on the road. Um, of course, it wouldn't be anywhere near as big as this stuff. But, uh, and we've talked about this before. The, um, the cyber truck, for example, is ripe for this kind of thing because of the tapered back. You could just make another trailer behind it would continue that taper and have a gap closure and you could tow batteries that would give the truck instead of 500 miles of range it could have several hundred miles of range um, or again you just have more storage for towing things for transporting things so there you have it this is the first uh, time I've been able to speak to anyone that owned a motorhome and had a trailer like this to find out whether he was seeing any impact on his miles per gallon. Uh, which he said not. Now, he didn't have any kind of real data for me. He didn't say, well, I got 8.37 miles per gallon without and 8.34 with the trailer or anything like that. He just said 8 miles per gallon. I get 8 miles per gallon no matter what. So, uh, who knows how carefully he's tracking his data. So, I'm going to leave it for there. I think this is a real coup. And, of course, I'm, uh, I'm really jazzed about there being a trailer out there called a Stealth Trailer. Um, as you know, I named myself uh, Aero Stealth because I believe that aerodynamics is hiding in plain sight. And uh, so... This is really good stuff. So, see you on down the trail, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.